And we are here today in part to read for somebody who can't be here because he's detained in a Saudi Arabian prison, the poet Ashraf uh, Fayyad. He's on death row for a crime that he didn't commit, for a thought crime, the crime of uh, apostasy. In February 2014, 100 intellectuals from Yemen, Oman, Egypt, Kuwait, Palestine, Syria, Iraq, Morocco, the United Arab Emirates, the Lebanon and other nations protested the arrest of Palestinian poet and refugee Ashraf Fayyad. Fayyad, a poet, artist and curator, was detained in the Saudi city of Abha and charged with insulting the godly self. In May 2014, he was sentenced to four years in prison and 800 lashes. Through the year of trials and imprisonment that followed, concern for uh, Fayyad's safety grew. In November 2015, Penn and several other organizations were appalled to learn that another Saudi court <coughs> had sentenced Ashraf Fayyad to death. He is now due to be executed following a retrial. They accused me of atheism and spreading some destructive thoughts into society, said Fayyad. He added that his book, Instructions Within, published in 2008, was just about me being a Palestinian refugee, about cultural and philosophical issues. But the religious extremists explained it as destructive ideas against God. I was really shocked. I didn't do anything that deserves death, Fayyad said in his last interview to The Guardian. He is not the only poet in prison. He is not the only poet in jail. The empty chair is in honor of all those who can't be here because they're being held, either sentenced to death or they're being held for crimes that they didn't commit chief of which is the crime of simply thinking thoughts that your state deems to be incorrect or unacceptable. I'm going to ask uh, Ashok Vajpayee ji to start by reading a poem of Ashok Fayyad and by explaining to us why should poets be free? Why are poets so important to all of us? Why is poetry so important? Well, friends, not only poets should be free, all human beings should be free. Animals should be free, birds should be free, and more importantly, as far as we are concerned, words should be free. And we are increasingly <coughs> in a situation where the imprisonment of all these keeps on expanding in some way or the other. Many, many years ago, I ran into Mahmoud Darvesh in an po international poetry festival and we happened to be talking and he said, you live in a free country. The only freedom granted to me and my people is my poetry. Now, therefore, why poets, and poets don't deserve any special treatment, but why they should be free is because poetry is that territory where freedom can exist without borders, without considerations of religion, caste, this, that and the other. And therefore, it is important that pre poets remain free to say and speak on behalf of all of us. I'll read the poem by Ashraf Fayyad. The world this morning resembles my stomach with its ulcers, resembles the ache that spends its weekends in my head, resembles the heaps of broken grass, glass that fill my memory. The world is no longer all right since I have stopped worrying about glass or the reply later to my letter or Mrs. Clinton's failure to lead the Democratic Party. Don't look for me. I'll be there with every sip of coffee. And when you relax at a spa or want to laugh or cry, and if you desire to toss yourself into someone's arm, or when you can't resist your insomnia or your mobile phone that didn't ring your, during your sleep, or when in the unconsciousness of writing, or when you want to talk while watching a movie, regardless of its quality, and when you tickle the ground as you walk exercise and when you hear our song, the one we have yet to agree on. This is what poetry does to you. It sings us songs 
on which we have yet to agree. So the choice, the freedom remains with us whether to agree that song or to listen to that song. The one we have yet to agree. Thank you, Ashokji. Ashokji is, of course, uh, very well known himself in the world of letters and he speaks from the heart to address this question. Could I ask Nirupama Dutt, who is very well known again as a poet, herself as a translator and as a biographer, to read another poem by Ashraf and to talk a little bit about what she has seen herself and what she has witnessed. I read a short poem by Ashraf Ayyad. My grandfather stands naked every day without banishment, without divine creation. I have already been resuscitated without a godly blow in my image. I am the experience of hell on earth. Earth is the hell prepared, prepared for refugees. Few more lines. Your mute blood will not speak as long as you pride yourself in death. As long as you keep announcing secretly that you have put your soul at the hands of those who do not know much. Losing your soul will cost time, much longer than it takes to calm your eyes that have cried tears of oil. Uh, I would also like to read few lines each from a Hindi and Punjabi poet. Uh, मैं तलवार से मारा जाऊं मैं तलवार से मारा जाऊं गोली से मारा जाऊं या त्रिशूल से मारा जाऊं मैं चिल्ला चिल्लाकर यही कहूंगा कि मजहब ही है सिखाता आपस में बैर रखना एक इंसान को किरपान गोली या त्रिशूल में बदलना यह हिंदी के कवि कुमार विकल की कविता है और हमने शायर मरते हुए देखे हैं पंजाब में अवतार पाश मारा गया था जयमल पड्डा बलदेव मान बहुत से सुमित सिंह जो लेखक था और कुछ लाइनें मैं पाश की जो बहुत मशहूर कविता है उसमें से बोल रही हूँ पुलिस दी मार सब तो खतरनाक नहीं होंगी लोभी अहंकार दी मुठ सब तो खतरनाक नहीं होंगी सब तो खतरनाक होंगा है साडे सुपनिया का मर जाना दिस द टॉर्चर बाय द पुलिस इज नॉट द मोस्ट डेंजरस द ग्रीडी फिस्ट ऑफ कैपिटलिज्म इज नॉट द मोस्ट डेंजरस मोस्ट डेंजरस इज द डेथ ऑफ आवर ड्रीम्स एंड बाय किलिंग अ पोएट बाय किलिंग पोएट्री वी किल ड्रीम्स Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, Pash's poems are so much part of Delhi as well as Punjab and I grew up hearing his verse. It was very moving to hear about this and I'm, I'm sorry for what you have witnessed. I, I can only hope that no more poets and no more writers and no more innocents will be killed in this country someday. Uh, Sanil Tripathi is very well known for his human rights work and has also written books on Bangladesh, essays on travel and uh, he is here in his capacity as chair of the Writers in Prison Committee of Penn International, which is a body that works for writers' rights. Uh, Salil, could I ask you to speak sure. a little bit about Penn and perhaps to read a poem of your choosing? Sure. Penn goes back to 1921 when it was founded. It's one of the oldest organizations that protect freedom, freedom to write and freedom to read. That's what it is for. And uh, it has a long history in India. Rabindranath Tagore used to be its president and among the many things we do uh, is to try to fight for the freedom of writers who are under threat or are in prison and sometimes if they do not come out at all uh, and in, in case they are killed then to hold vigils on their behalf or in memory of them. Um, I'm going to do three things. I'm going to read one of Ashraf's poems. 
Then I want to read another poem by Seamus Haney and then some important words that are relevant to the poet's work. Asylum by Ashraf Fayaz. To stand at the end of a queue, to be given a morsel of bread, to stand, something your grandfather used to do without re knowing the reason why. The morsel? You. The homeland? A card to put in your wallet. Money? Papers that carry images of leaders. The photo? Your substitution pending your return. And the return? A mythological creature from your grandmother's tales. End of the first lesson. It's important to remember why Ashraf was arrested. One of the reasons that's been given is that he's been arrested is that he committed blasphemy. But there are credible reports that he was actually arrested because he was using his mobile phone to film the beating of workers from South Asia by the religious police in Saudi Arabia, which he later put on Twitter and Facebook. And by, by bringing them in bad light, they wanted to get even. And one way the system is getting even with, the, with him is by sentencing him to death under blasphemy charges, which are very impossible to fight in that society. So let me write about, re read another poem by Seamus Haney. He wrote this poem on an anniversary of Amnesty International, which is, again, a very old human rights organization. And it's called the Republic of Conscience. When I landed in the Republic of Conscience, it was so noiseless when the engine stopped, I could hear a curlew high above the runway. At immigration, the clerk was an old man who produced a wallet from his homespun coat and showed me a photograph of my grandfather. The woman in customs asked me to declare the words of our traditional cures and charms to heal dumbness and avert the evil eye. No porters, no interpreter, no taxi. You carried your own burden and very soon your symptoms of creeping privilege disappeared. Fog is a dreaded omen there, but lightning spells universal good and parents hangs waddled infants in trees during thunderstorms. Salt is a precious mineral and seashells are held to the ear during births and funerals. The base of all inks and pigments is the sea water. Their sacred symbol is a stylized boat. The sail is an ear, the mast of a sloping pen. The hull, a mouth shape, the keel, an open eye. At their inauguration, public leaders must swear to uphold unwritten law and weep to atone for their presumption to hold office and to affirm their faith that all life sprang from salt in tears, which the sky god wept after he dreamt his solitude was endless. I came back from that frugal republic with my two arms, the one length, the customs woman having insisted my allowance was myself. The old man rose and gazed into my face and said that was official recognition that I was now a dual citizen. He therefore desired me when I got home to consider myself a representative and to speak on their behalf in my own tongue. Their embassies, he said, were everywhere but operated independently and no ambassador would ever be relieved. And finally, the question was, what is the worth of a poet? Why do we care about poetry? Why does Penn care about poetry? Why do all of you care about writing? And these are words of Salman Rushdie. A poet's work, a poet's work to name the unnameable, to point at frauds, to take sides, start arguments, shape the world, and stop it from going to sleep. Thank you. At a festival like this, what we are celebrating is books and reading and the telling of stories, and uh, also the freedoms that all of us currently have as writers to do this sharing. I want to thank all three of you for helping to put this session together. We decided to read for Ashraf Sapphire than other people who represent the empty chair in the room, only fairly late into the festival. And I really want to thank you for sharing not just your very precious time, but also your memories and your insights with the audience. I want to end with a, a reminder of how much these imprisonments and arrests, uh, the toll that this takes, not just on the poets, but on the families, on the people closest to them, 
Liu Xia, the Chinese uh, poet herself, is the wife of the imprisoned poet Liu Xia Bo, who has been held under house arrest since 2010 while her husband has been in prison. This is an untitled poem translated by Jennifer Stern and Ming Di. It's called For Xia Bo. You speak and speak and speak the truth. You speak day and night as long as you're awake, you speak and speak. Your voice breaks out and disperses. Death from 20 years ago returns. It comes and goes like time. You've lost many, but their dead souls are with you. You give up the daily life to join the crying out, but there is no answer, none. You speak and speak and speak the truth. You speak day and night. As long as you're awake, you speak and speak. Your voice breaks out and disperses. That wound from 20 years ago still bleeds, bright red, resembling life. You like the daily, but prefer to accompany souls. You promise to seek the truth with them, but there is no light on the path, none. You speak and speak and speak the truth. You speak day and night, as long as you're awake, you speak and speak. Your voice breaks out and disperses. The gunfire from 20 years ago still drives your life. You live forever in death. You love your wife, are proud she stays with you. In the dark, you let her do what she wants to, to write for you in the aftermath of death. But in her verses, there are no sounds, none. No one goes to prison alone. They take the whole family with them, a community with them, sometimes an entire country. And that's why it's so important to speak for the poets. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.